Hi there, welcome back to the journey and question answers. Let's see how to answer these questions. First some new words, lethargy, the state of not having energy or enthusiasm when doing things. Being lethargic is very boring, don't do that. Next, creeps, that means develops very slowly or something that comes slowly. Dilly-dallying, taking a lot of time to make a decision, that is called dilly-dallying. Shun, to completely avoid something or somebody. What did we learn from the brave potter? To shun alcohol, yes. Dissuade, to convince somebody to not do something. Plight, a sad situation or a difficult situation. Guilt, the unhappy feelings that you get inside when you know that you've done something wrong. The author was feeling guilt that he made his father carry his trunk. Self-consciousness, not at all needed. Feelings of nervousness, what other people are thinking about you. You think about yourself and you be a judge of your actions. Sometimes take advice, but don't rely completely on what others are thinking. Contentment, a very important quality in your life. This is the route to happiness. A feeling of happiness or satisfaction with what you have. Try to achieve what you want. Whatever you get, try to be content with that. Or try harder, that's good. Weary, very tired. And comprehension, question answers, let's see. Question one, after spending a leisurely Sunday at home, the very thought of returning to work on Monday is tiring. You feel lethargic. Do you agree? Have you felt so? Do you feel so after a long vacation you have to go back to school? You, do you suffer from the Monday blues? Most of us suffer from what we call the Monday blues. After a break, we feel lethargic to go back to our routine. We tend to remain in the holiday mood. Yes, I have felt so quite often. That's me. Have you? If you haven't felt so, you can write and say, no. I haven't felt so. I'm always energetic to catch up on Monday. If that's the truth, that's amazing. Next question. The last sentence of the first paragraph and the first sentence of the second paragraph appear to contradict each other. What was he saying in the first paragraph? I did not want to go. But in the second paragraph, immediately what is he saying? However, I finally decided to go. So the question here is, what could be the reason for the change in the decision? We'll see the reason. I did not want to go translated into however I finally decided to go very soon because the narrator was aware of the debts, the loans that he had incurred. He had uh, got it on to himself due to his wedding. He knew that he had to go back and join office so that he could get his salary. If you take too much of leave, will you get your salary? No. So, and he also realized that his responsibilities have grown. He has a wife now. So, he must be sincere at his work. Question three. Why did the author get into a debt? Why did he have to take so many loans for his wedding? Think of some possible reasons. What I thought of was, the author is from a tribal village and being highly educated and also working as a government officer, he had to make arrangements for his wedding in a grand way. Not many people from a village reach to such heights. So people obviously expect that you will throw a grand gala party. As he was one among the very few from the village who had seen such success. So he must have taken some loans to live up to that standard. Question four, why was the author reluctant, meaning not willing to carry his own luggage? What would you do if you were in the author's place? The author was under the false impression 
that being in a high position in society means one must not stoop or bend to do menial jobs. No job is menial. Every job has its own importance. Yes? But that is not right. Any job is a respectable job, be it carrying your own luggage or carrying someone else's and helping them. If I were in his position, that's me. If I were in his position, I would have carried my own luggage. I would have never thought of what society would think about me and make my old father carry mine. Would you do the same? Yes, good. Question 5. The author feared that the whole world would laugh at him if he carried the trunk. Was the fear imaginary or real? Give reasons for your answer. Do you think people will laugh at you for being respectful and helpful to your father? If a couple of them are laughing at you, ignore them. But the right thing to do was to not make your father carry your luggage. Let's see here. Many people give importance to vanity. What is vanity? Vanity means what we want others to think of us. That's not needed. That is wrong. We have to live up to our values, not others' perceptions. Also, we usually keep worrying what others are thinking of us, when in reality, everyone is busy in their own life. Maybe if they're commenting on what you're doing or if they're commenting on your life, that's because they don't understand the reason why you're doing something. You need not explain it to them. You do what is right. Half the time, our fears are imaginary. Half the time, we are thinking, oh, someone's thinking something about us. Half the time, it's not true. Nobody's thinking anything wrong about you. Be positive. Question 6. Choose one sentence from the story that best expresses the author's false prestige. Support your answer with details from the story. Let's read. The author could not muster, gather the courage to defeat his vanity. He was a victim of his false prestige that forbade him from carrying his own luggage. If I carried my own luggage, my father, my people and the whole world would laugh at me and I would be belittled. This sentence in the chapter shows the author's false prestige. What is real prestige? Being an example, set an example to the others how to behave properly. Question 7. What does the phrase opposite directions in the last sentence suggest? Remember, the author peeped out of the window and he said, I saw myself and my father traveling in opposite directions. One was literally, yes, the, the author was going to the city and the father was going back to the town. There is another second meaning to this. It not only suggests that the author and his father were proceeding in opposite directions, it also symbolically means how both father and son have grown apart over the years, so much that there is no scope for them to meet somewhere down the road of life. Remember, throughout the journey from home up to the bus stop, they did not have any point of conversation. They didn't even know what to talk about. Such different worlds they had gone into. There was nothing common between them anymore. It's a very sad thing. Do not ever separate yourself from your parents or close relations to such an extent. The last question, a little tricky, a little difficult. Let's see. How was the story told? First of all, this is a narration. So usually it's done in the past perfect tense or simple past tense or past continuous tense basically different forms of past tense. Also, were the events narrated in the order in which they happened? Yes, throughout the story, the author was telling that he went home for a holiday, then they had to go to the bus stop, and then they got into a bus. Just in between, in just one para, he speaks about his childhood, how their parents had sent him for education to hostels, and so he never grew up in the fields of his village. That's the only place where a little childhood aspect came in. It's 
what the sentences where the course of narration changed its directions. So what is this course of narration? Let's read that first. The author has used a mix of various forms of narration, direct and indirect. Usually when you narrate, you say my father had said that he would carry my luggage for me. But here the author has used actual dialogues whenever it came to his father. He used direct speech. Usually a narration uses indirect speech. But time and again the narrator has used direct speech when it comes to his father. This is because he wants to lay emphasis on that character in this story. So by putting in actual dialogue spoken by him, he has highlighted that character. He wishes the audience to associate more with that character. He wants the audience to see how different his father is from him now at this stage of life. That is a very effective way of narration. So narration doesn't only mean telling an indirect way. You can also include direct speech. But you have to put it in quotes. In the next video, we will read about vocabulary and grammar of the story, The Journey. See you soon.